Hello everybody. Uh, let me start off by drawing your attention to the community page of the YouTube channel here at Tipo's Corner uh, because it's a little bit relevant to today's deck. I went ahead and put a post up there. We've had about eight responses so far where we talk about Wizards of the Coast changing colors for the commander format and adding new abilities to the color pie. So for white, for example, we added that they did card draw and they've been adding land tutoring in terms of being able to bring out planes from the deck. And that's been added specifically so that white could have a boost in its performance when they're in the commander format. But the cards that they're making are in standard, right? So we get to use those. So I'm asking, how do you feel about this as a community? Uh, we have eight votes that split evenly during all four. Some people don't care. Some people think it's dangerous. Some people love it. Some people detest it. So I just wanted to ask for your input on that. And uh, what this is, is it's an, a special anniversary episode of uh, Tipo's Corner. My name is Travis, for anybody who's new. I've been doing this for three full years. This is the beginning of my fourth year, and it's coinciding with the beginning of January. So I'm going to try and record this just before we hit midnight, and then I'll be able to post it tomorrow for June the 1st. And uh, what happens is it's Evergreen Month, and we talk about... Evergreen means it's, it's, a, it's a mechanic that is always used in the magic sets it's always going to be there and uh we like to overload our decks with a single mechanic in evergreen month so all the decks this month are going to feature one mechanic but really heavy and i wanted to draw your attention to the good morning magic channel on youtube this is with uh gavin very he's from wizards of the coast he's a designer and he put out something about a month ago vigilance in blue why does blue get vigilance now and uh, so I've done plenty of Vigilance before, but the Vigilance decks were like mono green or mono white, white and green, that sort of thing. So this is the first year that I've done this where we have some blue Vigilance cards. And so I did a mono blue Vigil deck. And that's what we're going to go into now. So leave me a comment. Wish me a happy anniversary if you like. We're beginning year four. I'm planning to be here for another year at least. And Arena likes me today because we get to go first. Gave me one of the most expensive cards in the entire deck. Which is normal. That's the way their, their algorithm tries to sort cards out for you in the opening draw. There's been some controversy about that recently. But I'm going to try and call out some other YouTube channels more this year. Just because we've got a great community, and uh, I know there are some people that are subscribers of mine that are relatively new, and so I don't want to take it for granted you know everyone. So channels like Good Morning Magic, they're nice. They're like 10-15 minute videos each time you post something. It gives you a little peek behind the curtain, so to speak, on wizard design, on what, what the designers in the company think of, what they're considering when they're designing cards these days, and that sort of thing. As well as covering some old history. In the meantime, part of the reason that Blue may be getting Vigilance may also be part of this Commander format, because Commander has really shot up the last few years in popularity, and, uh, and it's, it's come before the Council of Colors within Wizards of the Coast more than once that Blue has trouble with combat mechanics, that they need a little something extra. And this was, I don't think this was always part of Commander. Um, I think this has been an age-old problem with Blue, because they started with flying, this was mostly all that they had, right? Um, over the years, they've, we've given them Hexproof, uh, Flash came out, and they got Flash. They got Prowess. Prowess, they thought, might be an answer for a little while, but Pro Prowess has some problems. It needs some support in the set. It can't be in every set. Um, you need to have something built in to allow for it, and, to, and certain things also can't be in the set or it gets to be overpowering or too complicated. So Prowess wasn't quite the permanent answer that they thought, although it has been a big help on occasion when the game environment allows for it. But in the meantime, I don't know if our opponent is actually here or not. In the meantime, they did look through and they decided we're going to give blue, we're going to add Vigilance. And since then, they've gone kind of crazy with it. So you see we've got Streets of New Capenna. Um, actually, that doesn't have Vigilance. That doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> let me get to the cards that actually have Vigilance. We've got... Um, the Ixalan expansion, we've got Dominaria as far back as Dominaria. 
there are a lot of people that um, are too new to the game and they don't realize that Vigilance wasn't supposed to be on blue, so I just didn't register. There are other people where um, they're so used to just logging on and playing the game and not thinking about things, they're kind of on autopilot. So they, they saw that the blue cards had Vigilance, but it didn't occur to them that, oh, hey, um, this is blue. Blue doesn't have Vigilance. It, they just didn't even notice when the first card was made. But since then, um, I think that it might amaze you to know how many, exactly how many cards in all of these sets have Vigilance. And, and they've started a couple years ago. Here's Dominary, and here's the recent one, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. It has Vigilance. So they have kept it up in every expansion, and I think they've been increasing it. And uh, I, I think a legitimate question is, have they gone too far, actually? Uh, let's see. Equal to defending player. Do I want to trade? No, I don't think I want to trade. I will go ahead and attack. And this is the nice thing about having a, a front line that's all vigilance. It's like you're playing Iron Man football all of a sudden. You don't need to worry about attacking anymore. You just attack. Because if you do need to use these as a chump blocker all of a sudden, you can. But you still get your attacks in early. So you have a much better chance of wearing down your opponent, especially blue, than they ever had before. And part of, uh, when you go through Gavin Verhey's podcast, he'll talk about how uh, Vigilance was probably the most likely uh, mechanic, existing mechanic to give to blue because it's so similar to untapping. Vigilance just means you can attack and the, the creature doesn't tap to begin with. Um, blue has had creatures that you could, for like an activation cost, you could untap them in the past. Or they have enchantments where you can tap down creatures. So the tapping, untapping is, is thought to be really close in style, or maybe substance, you'd want to say, to the Vigilance mechanic. What do we want to do here? Could draw three cards. Let's do that. These are these are all doing stuff to the opponent, not to my creatures. I don't want to put down this. I don't want to sacrifice this treasure just yet. But we did just cast a sorcery, which means the Hunting Figment is not blockable. So we're going to attack with just the one. And that gets through to ding him for another two points. So they got something that creates treasures for me, and then they got something that deals damage whenever I use them, because you have to sacrifice the treasures to use them. So he'll give them to me, but he's made sure to set up the combo. And this is from the newest expansion, and this is from the Markov expansion. Or sorry, M MKM, right? Murders at Karlov Manor. We've actually, we're doing, we got to go first and we're doing better on the card draw for land drops. That we may be doing too well on land drops. Um, what happens if I trade them something? Would they care? Hmm. Let's go ahead and attack first. See if they take the bait. I can change that to a 4-1. They're just going to take the damage. Okay, in that case, let's mill half their deck. Then we're at 49. Now they're going to go down to 25. And we're done. What kind of stuff did they get rid of? They had some go for the throat. They had a push and pull. A couple of camels. Is it waiting for me to let that resolve? Sorry. I was distracted. I was going through your graveyard. We'll let, we'll let them resolve some stuff. Generous Plunderer. We got rid of a couple of the Generous Plunderers. I wonder how much land we got rid of of theirs. About 
nine. So about half their land's gone. And they're milling themselves some more just to go get one creature. If they put in the right number of lands, about eight of these remaining cards are lands. Or no, 11. Maybe 11 of the 21? So we only have about 15 more cards to deal with others. And they haven't attacked us once. And they're not necessarily, even though they only have three lands, they do, they were having the treasure, so they've been doing that. We're going to go ping them just for two points. It's not a lot. They're still not quite half dead. But, no, I don't want to trade yet. Don't want to trade yet. I don't have an enchantment out either. They do like the idea of creating the in the treasures. There's a land finally. They could bring out Campbell. Okay, I think we're going to find we finally found a trade. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, opponent loses a life. And that one needs to be saddled. Oh, hello. Ouch. They thought that was worth it. Eight points to get rid of their 2-2. Two -two. All right. We'll let you do that one. Matter. Exchange control of two target creatures, please. We're going to take that one for that one. We'll bring down the Waterlogged Hulk. We'll bring down the Haunting Figment. We will attack with you and you and you. They take all that damage. They might have one more generous plunderer. If they combine that with the caustic bronco saddled attack, maybe they could use enough damage to get to me. They still got a third of their deck left. But if they're going to saddle it, they're going to tap both of those, which means whatever's left of mine that's alive, if they don't kill me this turn, they're going to get it. Um, what if I go ahead? Oh, no, I can't. Um, okay. We'll let them have that one. But I get the tokens, and it costs them a life point. And I gained a life. Thank you. just a land. I'm not sure why they attacked with that. And how many is this? Two? Actually, if we just make it five... We'll cost them another life point. And we'd be done. Oh. All right, so while we wait for that to resolve, I wanted to uh, point out when we go back to my community page where the post is, when I talk about this uh, commander format and them changing things, I do believe that part of the calculus as far as giving blue vigilance 
has been the commander discussion. I don't know for sure. I'm not behind the scenes. You know, I don't know. I haven't been present for any of their debates. So it is something we, I'd like to confirm with an interview with somebody from Wizards of the Coast sometime. But we, we do know for a while that flying has been kind of the one-trick pony that Blue has had. They traditionally get weaker creatures, whereas Green gets all the bigger, uh, more powerful creatures. And uh, so Vigilance was added to help them out in combat. I, I would like to find out and ask in their calculus how much of the discussion involved discussing the Commander format and improving Blue for the Commander format when they talked about Vigilance, if at all. But let's go through the deck real quick. We've got one Waterlocked Hulk. Uh, if we can craft it with an island and transform it, uh, it can turn into a 4-4 artifact vehicle with vigilance and if we've got eight permanents in our graveyard it can't be blocked this is also a really good artifact to combine with um, a piece of interaction that i have where where are you shifting rift uh, one, one of the spree cards if i want to get one of their good artifacts and they don't have blue they don't have an island to craft so this will only be ever an artifact where they can mill their own deck <laughs> it's not going to be anything more so I'm either going to get a 4-4 out of this eventually, or I'm going to trade it if they show up with a good artifact, and I'm going to get their artifact. So little trick. I don't know if it'll come up in this video. We've got Duelist of the Mind, Human Advisor, latest from Thunder Junction. Uh, X3 with uh, Flying Vigilance. The X is going to be one at the beginning when you just draw one card for your turn. If I commit a crime, I get to draw a card. Uh, but if I do, I discard a card. That part only triggers once each turn, but its power is equal to the number of cards you draw on this turn. And since I'm mono white, I've got four copies of flow, of, or sorry, mono blue, four copies of uh, flow of knowledge. Draw a card for each island you control, then discard two cards. So if I have one of my uh, Duelist of the Minds out, and then I do a flow of knowledge, uh, he's going to be pretty powerful. I've, I've hit for as many as seven points of damage with him on playtesting. This is the one I have four copies of, Haunting Figment. I like this card is 2-1, very small, very weak, uh, but it has Vigilance and it can't be blocked as long as you cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn. Hermetic Nautilus is 1-4, but you can uh, spend a little bit of mana and turn it into a 4-1. It has uh, Vigilance as well, so good timing on that can increase the damage. A little bit of interaction, I've got uh, Impute Momentum to tap a creature, put three stun counters on it and scry. Jaded Analyst, 3-2 uh, Defender, this is from the NKM expansion. When you draw your second card each turn, it loses Defender and gains Vigilance. So we've got, with our flow of knowledge and uh, in our ability to commit a crime and draw a card with Duelist of the Mind, we should have a number of opportunities to uh, use that if he's out. Malkadir's Watcher, uh, you probably know this card already. Flying Vigilance, 1-1. One, one. When it dies, draw a card. One counter spell in the entire deck, one negate in case uh, you know I want to keep something in surprise. Sometimes when you don't normally run counter spells and then uh, they think they're good to remove something, you surprise them with your single negate. Oaken Siren, 1-2 with Flying Vigilance. You can add blue. You can only cast an artifact spell with it or activate an ability of an artifact source. And uh, this has come into play a couple times already, which has surprised me because it's not like we put in a ton of artifacts. Picklock Prankster, we can afford to do the Free the Fey Instant Adventure where we mill four cards, then we get to choose an instant or sorcery among those four milled cards put into our hand, uh, then put it out as a Flying Vigilant 1-3 creature. Uh, Shifting Grift we talked about. Uh, three of the Blue Sun's Twilight to gain control of their creatures. One more draw spell with Silver Scrutiny, so we have five draw cards. Furtive Analyst, uh, Vigilance, 1-4. You can draw a card and then discard a card. Again, another way to draw, so it's going to help the Duelist of the Mind. Uh, Ice Rot Sentry, 2-3 with Vigilance. This is from um, Eldraine. Uh, whenever it attacks, you may pay 2 mana. When you do, you tap target creature and opponent controls. Whenever you do tap an untapped creature and opponent controls, the Sentry gets plus 2, plus 1. So if I get the uh, Impede Momentum later, I can combine uh, some fun stuff with that. Slickshot Vault Buster uh, gets plus two as long as you've committed a crime this turn. That could just be as simple as tapping a creature. Steam Core Scholar, not sure about the hat, but, um, you know, it's from the, the MKM expansion. 2-2 two, two with Flying Vigilance. Draw two cards when it enters the battlefield, then you discard two, unless one of those you discard is an instant, a sorcery card, or a creature with flying. Yet another way to draw some cards adds Duelist of the Mind's damage. Xerix Strobe Knight. Uh, flying Vigilance, and if you tap it, uh, if you do, if you have cast two or more spells this turn, 
you can create a 2-2 white and blue night creature token with vigilance. So a vigilant creature in blue, you can also create another vigilance creature that is at least partly blue. Kind of fun. Take flight, enchantment aura. Enchanted creature gets plus one, has flying, and whenever the creature attacks, draw a card. This is great to pair with a vigilant creature. Vantress Transmuter, this is sort of more for interaction. Uh, I'm looking at it using Croaking Curse. Two mana sorcery, tap target creature, create a cursed roll token. I use this to take out things like Shieldred, make it a 1-1, uh, and then you can bring it down as a 3-4 human wizard. Um, whenever Arena wants me to lose, they'll put me up against a counter deck, like uh, Green-White that just uh, has all the special counter increased decks, because you can make a creature a 1-1, but you can't stop them from adding counters onto it. We, can't, we don't have any white mana, so we don't pay attention to the Swift Spiral spell. We just bring this out for 4 mana as a 4-4 flyer with Vigilance and Ward 1. It's probably the tough one of the toughest creatures I have. Living Conundrum has Hexproof and is a 2-5. Why is it in this deck? Oh, well, let's read the text. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, skip that draw instead. As long as there are no cards in your library, Living Conundrum has Base Power and Toughness 10-10 and has Flying and Vigilance. So even when you think uh, I'm not doing it, I do put Vigilance in there. There's a way There's a way to meet those conditions and get Vigilance on that creature. Meldrub Strider is actually an artifact vehicle. It has Vigilance. Uh, you can crew it for three, or you can remove the oil counter that comes on it, and it becomes a 5-5 artifact creature. Into the Fake Court, this is, a, this is a, another draw card spell. Uh, draw three cards, create a blue fairy creature token with flying. Can only block other creatures with flying. Marauding Sphinx, 3-5, Flying Vigilance in Ward 2 whenever you commit a Crime Surveil 2. You can only activate that ability trigger it once per turn. And Teferi's in here because his minus 2 ability created a 2-2 blue spirit creature token with Vigilance. Also helps with the draw card advantage with Duelist of the Mind, that type of thing. And then finally, our most powerful spell, well, our most expensive spell. Cut your losses to mill half their library. And uh, mostly lands... Basic lands for surgical base to draw if that becomes helpful. Didn't even put a, a rune land in there to destroy their special creatures. I usually do, but you know, I have the flow spell that needs basic islands, so I left it out this time. We go first again? No way! Arena, do you know today's my anniversary? They're already doing me damage. Uh, let's put out the Siren now. It's a mirror match! No way! Um, making that a cursed creature doesn't do much good. Let's do this. There goes my Duelist of the Mind. There was no instant or sorcery there? What a jip. That stinks. I lost Teferi and the Duelist of the Mind? That's terrible. How much is that, two? So if I want to take it, I can get one back. Oops. Let me undo that. Is it okay? Do they have a draw spell? I'm just going to let that through, I guess. They were bluffing. Oh, no, they do have a draw spell. Um, that, oh, that's a sorcery. Okay. Um, boop, 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 we'll do that. Um, we will do this. And we will be done. They're looking at their graveyard already? You only have one card in your graveyard. They added in more than 60 cards. Maybe you want to take over that card instead. I want that card. Thank you. We can fly and attack them with Vigilance. 
They can block one. I've got to be a little bit careful if they have an instant that can cause them to draw cards during my turn. Looking at the top of their library again. And that's playing around with the plot stuff, right? What's the ward on this? It's three and it has ward two. Do you want to trade anybody? Or just bring out the Meldweb Strider for now? That seems fine. It is a mirror match. Arena found a mirror match for me. I mean, it's not mono blue, but I have that card, I have that card in the deck. A 3-5. I kind of want to trade that. I would need one more mana. What do I want to do here? I think we just put this down. Is that an artifact? No, it's a homunculus. Okay, we're going to pass. I do need basically six lands. If they're going to put ward stuff on uh, this, there's a ward theme here going on. It's not fair. They got all the land they want. So let's see. They surveilled. They got rid of the extra Fibble Thip and a land. They do choose to discard, draw and discard. Their land deals damage. Hmm. We're gonna block that one. We're gonna block this one. Yeah, I'm just gonna lose Oak and Siren. I messed up on that one. Not land. Not a land. What's the word cost on that? Pay two life? I don't think I have enough going on here. Hey, I said to resolve. Why didn't I pay two life? Okay, I messed up something big time. I thought that I hit resolve to, to allow it to pay the cost. Oh, shoot. That's ward two mana and two life. That's got a ton. That's got more than I realized. I just saw the one, two. It's ward two and pay two life at the same time. I really did need another untapped land. I think I'm just dead now. Yeah, part of that was my mistake. Six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, I'm, there's there's just nothing left for it. They've got menace. They got that stuff down. They got land, and I did not. Plus, I messed up. That is almost an overpowered card with having those two different word costs on one card. Try that again. I get to go first again. Well, I did lose. Let's see if I can not whiff on my milling. Let's see if I can read all the cards properly. 
The releases are coming too fast for me. I can't keep up with all the cards. Alright, Duelist of the Mind first, I say. And they're playing blue, so they need some time. Three stun counters, all right. It's gonna be that type of deck. This could end up being frustrating. Um, let's just put down, let's skip the milling. I need to have them run through these cards before they get all their white blue creatures out that benefit from that. And there's counters, which we mentioned that counters are a problem against us. So, yeah. I can't cast a single spell. They give me the four most expensive spells, except for the milling spell, in the entire deck. Up front. We'll see if they land starve me, too, at this point forward. Maybe we can steal it later? Remains to be seen if they have counter spells. We're gonna let you through. They're not using any of their energy? That has me suspicious. What happens if we just do this? They let me do it. Well, since I do have Vigilance, let me attack. I wonder if they have a spell to destroy artifacts. They could just have a bounce thing too. Yeah, bounce. They're spreading the love. I'm half dead. Let's try this again. They do have counter spells. I'm in trouble. Between tap spells, counter spells, and bounce spells, uh, yeah. I could use one of my spells where I take them over, but no, that would be asking too much. Um, three. Okay, we could we could maybe block one, and we're chump blocking the rest. But they're they're ready. Arena gave them everything they needed. Exactly everything they needed. And that's a complete counter. So even if I'd waited, I mean I could have taken him out with flow of knowledge, but not if they'd countered the spell. Yep, so every every advantage. They had the land, they had all the cheap spells. Three, three, two. Really cheap deck. Mine mine needs five or six mana to get underway. And by way of apology, <laughs> they did give me the most expensive card again, but they at least gave me a negate. Oh, wow. 
Wow, that's going to be a lot of removal, isn't it? Yep. They took my card. Gross. Um, discard a card with flying or an instant or sorcery. Hmm. Let's go ahead and toss the one. I'm almost to the point where I can play a card and protect it from removal. But the stuff I'm able to put out can't keep up with them exiling stuff. They'll probably still kill the Scholar too. No? Alright. Okay, um, let's do this. And we will attack. Again, counters. We do bad against counters, so yet another deck arena put us up against it does counters. Destroy target creature and opponent controls with value two or less. All right. They're just basically going to use the one creature, huh? Okay. Let's try this. There's still only a two lands? They should not attack this time. They're going to attack this time. Okay. We will do the double blocking to get rid of it. They really like raiding my graveyard, don't they? Do we take that? Not yet. That card I like. Okay, never mind. I may take that card after all. They're not attacking with it. Three, four, five. I'm greedy. I want more. If I do this, yeah, but I want to take it. I want to take it. I don't want to do this yet because I do have the negate. Okay, so I'm just going to attack for three. They're running out of stuff to exile, right? Needs to be a creature to get the plus one, yes? Back up to 30 for life. This could be a long match. OK. 
Okay. I like the hexproof. Let me let me take a risk here. Can't use the negate now. But they kind of stalled me out on land. I do need to take some risks since I'm half dead and they're like 50% tougher now. You may sacrifice a creature. Um, okay, we'll discard that card. Did they wait? The, it's only three. Did they wait until they knew I couldn't cast a negate? Now they can exile it. Sacrifice two tokens. Transform it. It's now a 6-6. Six, six. And it's now a 7-7. Seven, seven. Just give me one untapped land. That's all I ask for. Okay, we're chump blocking. Can't really afford to take seven when, our, when we're down to ten. Still not the right land. Okay, so let's do this again then. We attack for five. We'll chump block with the Oaken Siren. They got back their Vadmir. Where's all their land at? Where's all of my land at? It's a long time to go without a single land. Uh, okay. Exile a creature card from grid. Oh, do I still have one left? Oh yeah, the one I just chump locked. Let's see if they finally take a land out of their choices. Yes, they did. Are you going to start adding counters to someone else? No. Thank you. Was that so hard? Five. Take you. Pay the full cost. Get to surveil. I'm going to put that one first, but I'm not getting rid of that land. And then we'll attack over air with the one that has Vigilance. Got him under 20. And we got a couple of creatures now. Um, we can sacrifice a non-land, non-token permanent. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. They have more land. Woo! Man, he almost caught up to me. Ooh, nice. Okay, my creatures are gone. What do you got left? Okay, there's no more creatures right now. Casualty 2, we're going to sacrifice this thing. They've got 100 cards. They'll go down to 25. Yeah, let's get rid of the land this time. Mm, we don't want to attack. Now they're exiting my cards. Oh, what are the odds I finally saw the top of my deck and arranged it exactly the way I wanted? And they get it. When they finally get just the right number of mana. And that's the card that they have. Unbelievable. And, and I've helped them <laughs> with their soul cauldron. Lovely. And now I get the land. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Arena. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and attack. It's not going to get easier after this, right? Chump 
Chump block. I'm going to have to negate my own Teferi. I'm going to have to negate my own Teferi. They quit. They had the blood letter that they could pump up with Agatha's Soul Cauldron, and they still quit. They could have made that a 5 7. I would have had to chump block with the Phoenix, and they still had twice as much life. I have one measly negate. My last card, they have a handful of cards. They have cards in exile. Why in the world would you ever leave that kind of battle? They were so close to having me done for. I hate it when you get involved in a match that actually is kind of good, and then they just scoop for no reason you can figure out. I used my one counter spell on you against my own card. Boo hoo. Come back and play! This is why I have to go on Arena, because... Oh, hello. What is that with the oversized decks now? Is it because I have this one mill card in my entire deck? This puts me up against this? This is um, part of what we were talking about. Um, I'm trying to remember what I've talked about, because I tried to do this once before, and we had a power outage, and I lost the previous video, and it was a really good video. But I want to make sure that I give a call out to some of the other YouTube creators this year. And uh, one of the ones I'm thinking of is uh, Amazonian. I thought she did a real boost to the community by highlighting the, the Reddit post that talked about how um, they figured out a little bit of the weighted cost of certain cards and helped to figure out part of how magic determines what you go up against. And I think it's absolutely hilarious. Notice again, most expensive card, and it was in my opening hand. Why did they let that block? There's no creatures in there for you to get back. That's a waste of the card. Maybe because they knew they had this. Is going on. And for once, it's not my fault. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard Mr. Landrop? Space? Hopefully they don't have removal. Isn't it interesting? They've got 200 cards... And uh, they get an on-curve mythic rare planeswalker. I'm tired of your secrets. And still missing land drops. Um, I guess we play that. We get rid of the enemy planeswalker. Thank heaven, we can do that. Oh, that's my cue to leave. And my opponent is has more card draw than I do. Lovely. Or more land drops than I do. Um, all right. Thank you. What happens if we just exchange control of two creatures? I get the lifelink. Is that fair? Still outpacing me on land draw with their 220 card deck or whatever. <sighs> well. I would need five mana to take that over. I would need seven total. Dang. That's kind of interesting. They have such powerful creatures. They get five lands. They draw tons of land right away. Yeah, let's just mill you, I guess. I can't do anything else. We'll get rid of half your cards. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, we can attack. It don't matter. I'm going to lose half my life in the next round. What other kind of stuff do they have in here? Lots of removal. A couple more planeswalkers. Phyrexian Obliterator. Archfiend of the Dross. A little bit of Otox Reel. Tons of land. Um, yeah, I guess I'm blocking one of these. That's only five, right? Okay, one more untapped land. Whew! Auto pay. We get two. They still have more than a hundred cards, and I used my only mill card. And they have a flyer right now, and I don't. That's a timely card. Um, yeah, we can get rid of those. Bring down the Jaded Analyst. Bring down the Island. Attack with one of these. They didn't keep two unblocked, so Menace gets through. Now in actuality, they need to keep both of those unblocked, right? Wait, what are they going to do? They're going to get rid of their flyer just to get card draw. And these are death touch, but I still have, if I attack with both... If I attack with both, that's a lot of islands. Second flow of knowledge. Come on, card draw. Oh, this is kind of nice. Kind of nice. You know why? Because of that, for starters. Sure. Bring down a blocker. Attack with everybody. Uh, we get rid of you. And they take 10 points of damage. And even if they get rid of one of our creatures, we still have a chump blocker if we needed one. Perfect. Oh, I have a deck like this. Could transform that. Once they transform that, they could sacrifice this and do 13 points of damage, but they don't have enough time to set it up. Interesting how they got so close to that combo, even though I got rid of half their deck. Oh, I think I only have one of these right now. I like that card. I need more copies of that card. All right, let's do one more. So yeah, Evergreen Month is the month of June. I'm going to continue to make decks this month that are going to feature heavily one particular mechanic at a time. Uh, I have mixed things up. I've gotten a little more complicated uh, each year. So like by year three, I was picking cards that showed like the sword that gives you every single, <laughs> uh, it can absorb every single mechanic. So I was starting off with a simple one mechanic at a time, and then by the time June was finished, I was packing like every single mechanic into a deck. I don't know if I'll get that complicated this year, but this is sufficiently different just in the fact that uh, we're dealing with blue for a change, with Vigilance, whereas the other years was all green and white. So I do want to be able to mix it up as much as possible. This is great to have in my opening hand. If they really want to spend removal on it, they can. Good to get a 1-4 out in case I'm coming up against cheap red creatures that I want to block. I 
three colors and they already got all three colors. They get a 3-3 three, three with haste. Let's see. Non-token creatures you control have create a token. This is a copy of target token. You control the enter the battlefield this turn. We can block that. Um, what do we want to do? This is, it seems like we can only do the one thing. Do I block with all three now? I don't like these style art. I wish they never made these. I mean, it's not too bad to figure out the color, but it's an added complication that I don't appreciate during my games. If these were anything but lands... Like, if this, this is nice art for something like an enchantment saga. Okay, so they can create one ones, and then they can create additional one ones if they tap that. Well, 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 well. I'll take you in exchange for the one on the ground. You've got two energy. Can you stop that in any way? There's a 1-1. One, one. That's all they did. And we will attack with those two. Since this doesn't cost them any, any mana there's going to be a hang-up. They're going to have to resolve manually every single step when it's during my turn. Or they could interrupt and make that a 1-1. One, one. Gross! So that's first strike too, that's terrible. But mine do have Vigilance, so I could afford to let them attack me first and then attack back with the Vigilance ones. How many spells do you have? I already have one artifact creature. It's going to do me damage every time he attacks. Okay, that's three spells already in a single turn, and they still have three spells left in their hand. They can fly over if they want to. I feel like I want this, so I can do Flow of Knowledge for my blue token creature. Well, here I am. It's nice to see a familiar face. So I'm chum blocking this thing because it doesn't have trample. It's definitely going to want to, they're going to want to go after my planeswalker. Let's see, where do they get that from, right? Let's see, if you exit a land card, they get the 3-1. Disgusting. Oh, man! They view their own creature as the biggest threat. Another stimulus package. They ended up with so much more land than me so quickly. I always feel like I'm behind. They're they're not going for broke, they're only attacking the one. Perfect. I get to draw a card from that that pumps up both to Fairy and my token.
Come on, come on, come on. Don't have any... Well, they, they could cast a lot more stuff, right? There's an additional combat phase? You've got to be kidding me. Oh, but they did that after the combat phases were already over. Okay, so... Let's start with this. I only had three. It's not the greatest. Um, I guess we get rid of that. And that. Again, they could sacrifice this treasure, so they have to manually resolve every single trigger. That's what's taken a while. I guess we just put that down, and then we draw another card. I am here. That's a nice card. <laughs> I'm I'm willing to sacrifice this to get rid of your Dracosaur. It's got Vigilance. What do I care? Just chump block the one. That's fine. Okay, we're going to chump block his Dracosaur with our Oaken Siren, and then we're taking a card over. But that costs five, right? I only have six lands? No, I have the treasure. Okay, so I can still do it. We're still good. And I don't think they can destroy Teferi in this one round. Another Generous Plunderer. We're going to have to get rid of these treasures anyway. Guaranteed my opponent does not know what's coming their way. But they've got enough energy already, they can cast any spell in their entire deck. But we see they had a token theme that they were counting on. They didn't do anything. Oh, my friend. I want that one, please. is an interesting fact. This is not legendary, it's just mythic rare. So I now have two 5-5 five, five flyers. And I have two fives they can't block. And that's all of their good creatures. to get rid of one measly token. That's what I call a nice exchange. Five five with reach and trample, we don't care anymore. I do wish I had more islands rather than they gave me three of the four surgical bays. Did you notice that? <laughs> That's where all my islands have been. Okay. So we put this out. We put this out. Wait for them to resolve it. Put this out. I just want to have some fun for a minute. 
Bear with me. We're not going to attack. Who's that handsome devil? It's me. Okay, so we lose that stuff. But I have two flows of knowledge. Too bad I can't do two at once. Sacrifice three treasures, scorpion dragon with flying and haste. We don't care. It's not bad, but we don't care. Well, maybe we do. <laughs> I forgot about the railway brawler for a second. Rooksy. Oh, wow, no way. No way. First strike against the 8-8. Eight eight. Um, knock out you. Hang on. Knock out you. Stop you. Mm, that's good. I'm kind of surprised they did that. Does this mean they're going to scoop next turn? Before I get to do my stuff? What was that? Creature get plus one in first strike? I guess you're not joking around. They saved some stuff. Hang on a second. Did they do the untap as well? No, I don't think they did. Good game. Don't leave. Don't leave. Let me have a turn. Come on. Come on. Oh. I was having fun. I just want to play one more card. I just want to have fun playing my cards. I just, I had Duelist of the Mind. I had the Spirit. We were going to draw four cards. He'd get plus four. He'd get plus four. He'd get an extra loyalty counter. Then I could draw a card from there. <sighs> I let them go through that entire spiel, and they ran and did everything they possibly could, and they didn't have the courtesy to wait around and let me play one final card. And they saw I spent an entire turn not attacking them. And, oh, I only have one card of that. Darn it. I have 5-5 five, five flying first strikers that I do not attack them with, and that's how they repay me. Yeah. Anyway, that's how Vigilance works. Um, it's really kind of nice that you can set up, if you've got a bunch of creatures, you know, set up a, a solid line. If you can get through with one or two that has some kind of ev evasion or something, you don't worry about swinging in and hitting them for a couple points of damage. And then if you need to use it as a chump blocker, the very next turn you can. Very advantageous. I think I like that blue has it. I don't think that bothers me. Um, I do know that it was given because blue has needed help for many, many years. Blue made up for it in the past because they made the counterspell regime so overpowering. And when it wasn't counterspells, it was card draw advantage. And uh, I think you still, I mean, if you get the right lands up front, you can still make a case and say that <laughs> blue can overpower you with draw card easy enough. Uh, but um, just in terms of creature combat and historically having the weakest uh, creatures in the entire uh, color pie, um, I think it's justified. I think I agree with their choice here. I do want to find out how much of this is inspired by the idea of beefing up the color to help out in Commander at all. Just because I don't know how much, if any at all, that was a factor. Uh, but, uh, as always, we ask you to like and subscribe. Leave a comment for, you know, if you want to talk about the anniversary. Uh, if you have any questions about how Evergreen Month is going to go. That kind of stuff. And uh, otherwise, we'll have something new for you next time. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.